Hi, I'm Alindra McLean and I'm a human at JGA. Welcome to the Humans of JGF, a JGF holiday special, highlighting the brilliant minds behind our vision. And our guest today is calling me to good behavior. <laughs> because it's HR in the house. All right. <laughs> it's not just any guest, good people. We have Alendra. Alendra, how are you? I am so excited to be here. Mm. Like, it's my first time in studio. I'm feeling cool. I don't feel like I want to wear that HR hat right now, yeah. but I will in any way. Um, but I'm feeling good. Thanks. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Where are you from, Alindra? Originally, I would say um, my heritage. Let's talk about that. Oh, um, please. My, my family is actually from Madeira. Mm -hmm. So coming from a Portuguese background and lineage. And then they mixed up with some Zulus. Okay. With some Indian. Okay. <laughs> with some colored. And oh, it please. made me sort of, you know, who I am today. I'm a complete mixed bag of chips i am a colored female from durban kz in originally and mm -hmm. have been in cape town now for the last 22 years oh. officially cape tonia now all right all right fully baptized fully baptized <laughs> um now i wanted to describe the work that you do because we all know that hr got a bad rep in these streets you know what i'm saying <laughs> you don't just talk anyhow about <laughs> hr in any any department um in any industry rather hmm. When you define human resources, yes. how do you define it? You know, I've actually been thinking about this. Um, I started off at AGGPA, supporting JGF and a few other areas. But, you know, specific to my role, mm. I've been thinking about this in terms of what do I want the experience of HR to be felt like when I engage um, talent when I engage employees and mm. how they feel about what the purpose of my role is. Mm, there's what a is tenuous the, relationship. You know, People are scared of HR. Yeah, they're scared. And the reason Before they even scared, know what you do. It's because I think it's about upholding values. Mm -hmm. It's about upholding values and bringing people together to really engage and feel enabled to move where you need to go. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, our role encompasses the enablement side of people. Mm. So, you know, there's the part that's processes, there's the part that there's systems. You know, everyone's got technical roles, but our roles are really heavily concentrated on people. Mm -hmm. And how do we enable mm -hmm. people, not only from their personal growth and development perspective, to sort of move with the organization and that organization's growth but also identify where are they maybe not great fits where are they not good matches how do we sort of support what does succession look like from a mm. leadership point of view how do we enable leadership so how do we start getting leaders to sort of understand um, how to coach how to develop how to retain talent mm. how to have conversations that are sometimes not so easy to have yeah i suppose that that's where the fear comes from it's like you have to be a person who's quite comfortable having difficult conversations yeah. maybe sometimes not being that voice in the room that's the popular voice yes um always going back to what is right mm. always holding the line in terms of values and then legislation so like you know what does our our act say when it comes to looking after the humans that we support mm -hmm. and making sure that those things are in place so it's about fairness it's about really just being that middle man from an employee employer relationship and how do i ensure that all people are experience working in a place um, the way the intended experience was. So I think in summary, it's an enabler role. Enabler role. I learned a term from Carla, courageous conversation. So you hold that. I hold that. You hold and I that. encourage that, right? Mm, so mm. it's about how do you also not just sit with what you know, mm. but impart that. Um, because when people, like you were saying, the word fear or like, you know, you get a bit worried when you hear HR mm -hmm. about that. Um it's funny for me because I don't see myself in that way at all. I see myself as a partner. I see mm. myself as um, how am I going to walk with you um, to get there? And I think um, the one thing I think in my own opinion that I try and strive for is trust. Yeah. Um, it's not just about um, here for the leadership of, you know, the team, et cetera, or, or just wanting to make those sort of leaps and bounds. It's about how do I understand people where they are and how do I help them 
genuinely to sort of like move beyond that and and give them that relevant support and also those people were okay to just be where they are that's okay too you know mm, mm. we are a teaching fellowship um, it is only fair, it makes sense for us to teleport ourselves back to the classroom where it all began for us, where education is concerned. Yeah. What are your earliest memories of being at school, Alendra? So the funny thing was, my I'm a, I'm a daughter of four girls. So I'm the youngest and we all start with A's. Okay. Um, so I'm number four in the, in the pecking order. But I had a complete love for school mm. from, um, I think, when I was two or three. And the funny thing was, um, my sister's a year older than me. Mm-hmm. I went to school before her. Okay. <laughs> Wait. So, yes. <laughs> I was like, oh. She stayed at home and enjoyed the How cartoons. did she take that? She wanted to be at home and I wanted to be in the classroom. And so I love it for my queens. Completely. And I also absolutely love people. And I think that was something that was from a really, really young age. I enjoyed education. I enjoyed interacting. I I, I think I just enjoyed being at school. Mm-hmm. And then my earliest um, sort of like memory was I really struggled to sleep during nap time. That was also a problem with me. I still struggle with day naps, mm. just by the way. And then also just from a school point of view, I, almost, I always was like, somebody who really pushed from a academic point of view not always did I achieve what I wanted to achieve I kind of still you know like I was like that average student but um I think my I, I sort of like aimed more from a a personality perspective and almost just the not always the academic part of it but like more the leadership part of it like you know being that monitor or the prefect or things like that so mm. I almost just found opportunities like that in school but um Really, school has been something that I absolutely loved and adored. My sister was, you know, as you can imagine, quite rebellious. Um, mm-hmm. She would bunk school. I tried to bunk once. It was a disaster. Um, <laughs> I literally went to school at 10 o'clock in the day because I just couldn't stay at home. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like you a turned super, yourself super, in. I turned myself in. You I turned couldn't. yourself I like, in. I think I should have known by then, like, HR was destiny for me <laughs> because I was like, I can't break the rule. <laughs> just don't let me break the rule. <sighs> so that's honestly, like, my earliest memories um but i loved school i really yeah. just loved it and who's your favorite teacher my favorite teacher was my grade four teacher we used to say standard two yes I'm yes, old. yes 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 um yes. and her name was mrs bully and i absolutely loved her i think she was just really somebody who had a lot of compassion um for her students i also you know in that class um my parents were going through a divorce at the mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. and i found her support beyond the classroom being something that really just kept me so um engaged and i felt like this extended love that came to the classroom mm. so it was really a great support structure for me and I, I really think she was quite impactful in my schooling lovely stuff so you are now here how did you hear about the Jake Scarborough Fellowship so I was um very blessed I would say to um have met Julian in my interview process. Yes. JGF um, was something that I didn't sort of organically come across or anything like that. But um, I come from a background that is predominantly retail Mm. um, and corporate. Mm. And there was something in me about maybe two years ago that my husband and I were just like, we need to feel like we are giving something different and something more to our careers that it's not just a place to go and work. And like, what does that look like? And we had a child also two years ago and you start thinking about what are you imparting? What are you sharing? Mm. What is he witnessing? And I thought, you know, in that time, my husband was appointed into the social sector space as well. And I watched him and observed him and the conversations they've been had. And then it started making me interested in a change of industry, right? Mm. So I want to say I inherited JGF as one of my entities that I support within the broader philanthropy space. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm so blessed that I did um, get this opportunity because I find it to be such a great match to who I am. Yes. Um, And, you know, I feel like beyond HR, I probably want to be in every single part of this area because I'm just so passionate about um, youth development, education, Mm -hmm. like it's something that is close to my heart. So that's how I came to know JGF. Um, Julian was part of my interview panel. Yeah. He told me a little bit more. I did some research and then it sort of just made me even more excited to sort of apply for the role. And, and I'm just blessed to have um, been successful to, to be here. And what has surprised you about working uh, with JGF? With JGF, I think um, 
it's a community. It is um, a culture that you cannot ignore. I think that there's very intentional culture that has been created in terms of the people that you hire, yeah. the way you indoctrinate your values. Um, what surprised me most, I think, is coming into the social sector, you almost have this view that there are things that maybe are not sort of driven as hard in terms of delivery, um, etc. But the excellence and the people, how they show up and how everyone just sort of jumps in and their hands are in many pies and mm. everyone's just a collective community, if I could call that word again, just to say that everyone's in it, everyone has the same vision, the same goal. Um, I do wonder, like, you know, uh, like sometimes what does everyone do in their spare time because they're so dedicated to being here. So yeah. I think that for me really surprises me, especially coming from my background and trying to understand, you know, what that shift looks like. And I don't think it's everywhere. Mm. I do think there's something very special about JGF. <laughs> <laughs> and our candidate fellows are our North Star, our beneficiaries, the reason why we do the work that we do, partnering with their vision and transforming and bettering the South African education system. What what about our candidate fellows from what you have, have observed gives reassurance that South African classrooms are indeed in safe hands? Look, again, I'm going to go back to excellence with JGF. Mm. And I feel that um, every single candidate um, who's managed to be part of this program is already special. Um, they're already unique because of the way JGF does things, because of the culture, because of how we operate. So when I look at um, at every single person who's been part of the program, and I've been here only for a month, so mm -hmm. my interaction has been limited, but I can say in confidence, like every interaction has been extremely um, reassuring about the commitment to um, the bigger problem from an education perspective. Mm. And I don't believe that even up to the next teachers that we sort of just develop and put into the system ends there. I almost feel that those same individuals are going to expand and grow um, where we need to be. It's not just ending there. And it mm. feels like um, that experience is going to influence other decisions at very important people within our government, within our landscape who can do something about the problem around education because I think that's what we're trying to address, right? So um, I'm super confident. <laughs> Lovely. Good to hear. And now... Our hashtag throughout the year is be a teacher. Someone's listening to you right now, Alindra, and they have this amber within their spirit. Mm -hmm. I want to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. Words of advice. Sure. Um, I'm actually so grateful for the question, and I really hope somebody beyond these four walls today hear the answer. Because mm. I think that um, looking at teaching and looking at um, the future generations it really does um, make you sort of realize the importance of a teacher's role in, in our youth's lives. Um, and I think that we are, the youth are growing, right? The, the numbers are growing. Um, the generation is there. There's a lot of things that I think um, you can replace with systems. You can yeah. replace with automation. But teaching and having that magic of the classroom is something that I think is forever like yeah. you need it forever so if you are thinking of being a teacher um and impacting an individual's lives i think through this podcast through other experiences it is very clear um what the impact has had even in my own life in terms of my own career decision eventually um so at any level in the um in the schooling sort of process i would say that it is much needed that we just continue just building teachers and I really would hope that um, whoever hears this and wants to be a teacher goes for it and looks at your passion beyond anything else yeah. like transfer your knowledge it is needed um, uh, yo, uh, I actually don't even have more words to say but I just want to plead to say it's a need it's mm. a very very important need and um, whatever support is needed I think even from a curriculum point of view I hope that the relevant people at B or powers at B can actually do something about that mm. and really just help drive um, this entire education system forward. Um, and I also, I'm just hoping maybe there's a political leader out there can just enhance what teachers are sort of getting to make it more lucrative for yes. them. Because I think sometimes um, people will choose not to be in the industry because of what that offers. But mm. if your passion lies there, 
go for it. Like, go in there. Get in there. Lovely. So after you, we have Pearl, who is going to be interviewed. What fond memory do you have with her or of her? Oh, Pearl, I know now for six weeks to the date. Mm. Um, Pearl, she's like my counterpart. So she's the finance uh, business partner. I'm the HR business partner. Mm. So I think my fondest memory, um, and it's not it's not something that's so long ago, but um, Pearl like has a, a really really kind heart. Is yeah. what I've realized about her. Um, so there was times where we both sort of like really working and we're not getting up. We 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 busting our nuts there at the laptop trying to make things happen. Um, and not so long ago, I was actually having quite a hard day where I did not get up to even go to the bathroom, I think in about six hours. Mm. And she literally came and she's like, Alinda, do you, do you want me to get you some lunch? And I was like, that is so kind. Um, mm. And she went and she, she got that for me. And before that, she even shared her chocolates with the entire team. No. So I honestly think that her act of giving and, um, you know, her own way of showing love and compassion for her, her teammates, even though we're not like literally the same team Mm. but we support the same area i think that for me is so special and she's so special thank you so much alindra for coming onto our show uh we really appreciate your time and your expertise and your enthusiasm your kindness your openness is going is doing an incredible job in deconstructing our perception of hr let's start there it humanizes the work and we are so excited to grow with you in the organization and thank you so much and we appreciate you being part of the organization you are indeed a human of jgf and jgf so you know the drill it's jake's travel fellowship on social media when in doubt just go to google Jake's Hava Fellowship and any and everything that you require uh, is on the website. Partner with the work that we do. It is legacy work. This this is work that will affect generations even after us. Let's make this indelible mark where it matters. I'm Matabutladi and I'll see you on the other side of this. Bye.